so seeing the moves of the child the parents heart overflows with love with affection and that was the case but many times it happens that to a person to whom everything is given many times become spoiled and that's what happened with the with our small child and as his demands were being fulfilled his demands were increasing exponentially going to the domains of unreasonable expectations and so on and so forth and with that naturally when demands grow exponentially or when demands grow beyond the domains of what is helpful for a person then many of such demands may not get fulfilled or may not uh, uh, so may not get fulfilled and one such instance like this when the child's demands were not fulfilled and he was seeing that and he was seeing this kind of discrepancy and you know, integrating over time and one such instance the child was very angry with his parents and he thought what is this my parents never fulfill whatever i want them to they don't have any love for me i am desiring small small things and they are not fulfilling how can they deny my demands my desires so thinking like this the child became very angry and he started making a list of all the instances where his mother and father failed to supply what he demanded of all the instances where his mother and father had uh, chided him mildly chastised him and so on and this list was growing and meditating on that the child was becoming more and more angry so in the in that fit of anger the child decided that okay you people don't love me what do you think i cannot stay without you he said i am going to leave the house and thinking like this a small child he thought okay now only i am leaving it was 11 pm in the night and all of a sudden his mother heard that and she started crying she started sobbing and the father was evaluating what to do now and ah uh, la uh, should it be treated with a slap or should it be treated with so the father thought let's have a discussion and now the child was in fit of anger full of wrath full of anger and wrath the child was marching past and the father said i have a proposal for you you can consider and the child said no i am not going to stay in this home the father said okay not a problem but i have a proposal you can consider he said you don't want to stay with us the child said no or go out go out of this home and the father said okay i have a proposal for you the proposal is that we have an extension quarters and the door is on the right side you know once you're in the extension you cannot come to our main house and uh, it just got free from rental it's available if you want you can stay in the extension house and the child said but i don't want to see both of you and the father said no there is no connection rudra this is facing north that is facing west or a problem and the child was considering he thought it's 11:30 in the night the child said okay i'll consider this proposal so the child in the fit of anger he went to the extension quarters he went to the room there was a bed there and he just slept off and all the while he was meditating 
how his parents are so cruel all this while he was meditating how his parents are not reciprocating with him the child was sleeping and all of a sudden the child got up you know by uh, uh, by a noisy sound and then he saw that there was an alarm it was uh, seven o'clock in the morning and there was an alarm and the child remember he had to go to school he has a test in the first hour but he never kept an alarm in the night when he got out or when when he sat down he saw that uh, there was a nice quilt over him and a cozy and thick a big rajai but he had never kept any such thing like that in the night Anyways, he got out, he went to the bathroom, when he went to the bathroom, he saw that uh, everything was arranged. There was a fresh towel, there were uh, a toothpaste, soap, uh, there was hot water for him. How did it come about? Anyways, he took bath and came out. As soon as he came out, he saw that his school dress was pressed and kept in front of him on his bed. And, uh, his quilt had been folded uh, and there was a school bag with the same books which match his uh, subject uh, timetable for the day and then he went out in the uh, in the living hall the lobby area on the table there was a glass of milk kept with some puri sabji and there was uh, a tiffin but there was no father and there was no mother and the child went to school when he came back again his home clothes were kept the bed sheet was changed fresh lunch was kept for him but no father no mother So it's very easy to say that I can exist on my own. I can do anything on my own. But what we want to question is that is it not similar to the proposal which this child is posing? Is it not similar? to the situation uh, of this child or is it not childish to think like that that I can do anything on my own I can stand out on my own I don't need anybody's help so many times people pass various comments when it comes to life when it comes to universe we see that so many uh, comments are very casually passed or so many statements are very casually made there is no God behind this universe. Everything is happening by chance. The concept of God is just a hypothetical concept which has been so designed just to keep the society uh, just to keep the society uh, in peace and order. So many such questions like that or many such pointers like that are, 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 are thrown off and if you try to see that the situation is very much like the small child in a figment of childishness narrow-mindedness and short-sightedness many such statements are made without much substantiality and the unfortunate thing is that these statements when they become These statements, when they, when they become the guiding principles of one's life, then one is prone to be misguided. Because, because it is short-sighted, because it is childish. <coughs> so, just like 
it's just like one needs the entire facilitation and care and warmth and nourishment of parents for for almost around one and a half to two decades for one to be able to stand on one's feet in a similar way we are existing in this world it's all because of the the facilitation which has been happening that's all because of facilitation which is happening all around so that's why uh, nothing is possible in that sense on an individual ground so how can the, how can the entire world with its complexity with the with the amount of fitting that it has as per our needs our needs are so nicely fit and nourished the question is or the point which we are trying to put forward as a food for thought is that is this world not like an extension house where everything is facilitated and therefore we are ready to thrive therefore we are able to thrive what to say of anything else we can see that when people they are depressed when their minds are stressed out one of the cures which is given by psychologists and psychiatrists is uh, to spend more time with nature just by spending time with nature or spending time in nature one gets refreshed one gets refreshed it's 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 a cure to detoxify the mental uh, no, poisons which is given actually so now the point is this is uh, uh this is facilitation we are being facilitated this is like an extension house to just uh, uh uh to just touch upon this a little further we can understand uh uh let's touch upon uh an intrinsic uh, interesting incident in the life of uh, sir isaac newton one time a friend came to sir isaac newton and his friend was expounding a philosophy somewhat like what we are touching on he was saying my dear friend you know this world has come by chance everything is happening by chance there is no god god is simply like a psychological crutch for the weaklings that's all just a hypothetical concept randomness chance is what governs everything if god exists why there is anomaly suffering all around that means god doesn't exist that means everything is chance and everything and you know hearing he heard for some time he tried to answer but his friend was uh, going on and on now for some time Newton in his thoughtful state he told his friend my dear friend uh it's late now uh let's break for now and uh we will continue the discussion tomorrow evening and the friends are okay i'll come right in tomorrow evening oh snacks so the next day the friend came and when he came he saw a newton's drawing room a marvelous ah uh, a marvelous gorgeous ah uh, uh, amazing looking ah uh, model of the universe it was looking precise it was looking intricate it was looking fabulous why because it had all these planets which were appearing to be in their relative sizes around the stationary sun uh and the and the amazing part was these planets were all moving or orbiting in uh, elliptical orbits uh and they also seem to be relative i mean they all seem to be uh 
a relative mathematical replica of uh, the exact dimensions in reality. And, and in fact, these balls were also revolving that way, rotating and revolving both uh, at speeds which are also appearing to be relative, just like it happens uh, in uh, the satellite orbiting. I mean, in the natural satellites orbiting. And a friend when he saw that, he said, wow, this is so amazing. Where did you get it from? I want to buy it. He became excited. But Newton was very grave. The Newton said, oh, uh, uh, what did you say? Uh, how did I get it from? Uh, uh, how did I get it from? And he said, um, uh, yesterday night, I bought some balls, some wooden balls for my children. Um, uh, and morning I got up from sleep and I saw this is what is happening. I mean, so I don't know. I really don't know how it has come about. Maybe it has come about by chance. And the friend said, come on, what are you doing? You're kidding with me. I'm not the person to be kid. I mean, I'm not the person to be joked at. And you said, believe me, you know, all I can say with all my understanding is all oh, chance. That's all. And the friend got a bit angry. He said, what is this? This is not a time to joke and I'm not the person to joke. And then Newton made the point, a very meaningful point. Newton said, this model is a very poor, minuscule uh, imitation replica of the actual universe. If you are not ready to believe that this model has come by chance, by what logic, by what intelligence are you having full faith, 100% faith that this universe has come by chance? Can this universe come by chance? That was Newton's argument. So this is the point. Now sometimes people say that I don't believe in God. Because I don't see God. And some of people say, okay, I'm going to take a count of 10 and God should appear in front of me. No. So if you want to do this experiment, you know, uh, if you want to do this experiment, uh, what to say of God, you know, even if you say, okay, I'm going to take a count of 10, the district magistrate may also not appear in front of you. This is not. Because, for that to happen, you need some qualification, is it not? So yes, if you are the President of the United States, and then if you say, okay, I'm going to take and count 10, and the Prime Minister of India should appear in front of me, maybe that is possible. But if you are not, then good luck. <laughs> it is never going to happen. So the point is that it requires qualification. What is our qualification to see God in the first place? What is our qualification to see God? So I remember we were in, uh, I was in, uh, I just completed first year of engineering and I had just gone to second year uh, in KGP. Uh, so, so I remember there was the alumni, uh, I mean, uh, not the alumni, this uh, felicitation ceremony, no, the certificate the degree certificate, felicitation ceremony was there, convocation. So many seniors had come and uh, after the convocation in the night, they had come to hall and there was a gathering, there was a get together and all that. So I remember the episode, and some of the seniors took me and they were introducing me to others and they introduced me to one fellow who was uh, 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 was uh, a silver medalist, uh, I mean the president silver medal holder, electronics department topper, nine point, working in Intel. And they introduced me and they told him, this fellow you see, he always keeps doing God, God, you know, the godly, godly fellow, like that. And they told him, you please give him some good funda. Isko sudharo thoda. Like that. So he was 
सो लाइक दैट दे इंट्रोड्यूस मी सो दिस पर्सन थॉट अच्छा इसको सुधारना है आजा बच्चे इधर आ यू नो सो ही वॉज कॉलिंग मी यू नो ना सो ही वॉज कॉलिंग मी सो सो देन ऑल ऑफ देम वर ऑन द यू नो आई वॉज लाइक स्मॉल पुअर अभिमन्यू यू नो लिल बेट एंड दे हेड ऑल मेड अ चक्रवी अराउंड मी लाइक दैट and uh, you see all the fifth year you know fellows they looking like a bully you know and and there was this pass out due to an elite fellow you know like that and there were some other fellows like that and i was a poor small child i was surrounded by all of them and uh, and he started telling dick you know i will tell you the funda of life ne ka acha so so he started telling ki dekho he started echoing the same thing ये भगवान भगवान कुछ नहीं करते गॉड और नथिंग यू नो लाइक दैट सो यू नो वाइल यू आर हियर इन केजीपी जस्ट चिल है ना जस्ट चिल है कि नहीं है ना दो तीन गर्लफ्रेंड घुमाओ है कि नहीं और खुद भी घुमो जितना सो लाइक दैट दैट वाज हिज काइंड ऑफ फिलोसफी एंड ही सेड जस्ट कीप अ टैप ऑन योर स्टडीज एंड जस्ट एंजॉय दिस टाइम टू चिल व्हाट आर यू डूइंग दिस दैट and then he was telling kisne dekha hai bhagwan who has seen who has seen god you're not seeing god and you're trying to you know uh you're not seeing god and you're simply trying to you know uh, do some practices which are centered around god and all wasting time you know like that just chill out chill out now you're in kgp you you know you're from computer science you can chill it out you know like that so that was his that was his, the crux of what he wanted to tell me actually then i asked him i said sir can i ask a question you know he said okay puch puch fund puch raha hai na puch puch batata hu main you know like that so then i started asking him <clears throat> so uh so i asked him that uh, uh what is the rank in je you know so he got a little you know he took he was taking it a little on ego he said hey kya puch raha hai i'm just 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 trying to you know so he had a good rank <laughs> he was in ntc had a good rank you no know, at some 400 500 rank in j you know <laughs> so he was in ntc yeah <laughs> so uh uh then i started asking him his first year cgpa you know And then I started asking him. So, uh, so when did you start the uh, you know, pre-JE preparation? You know, where did you do? He said, I did it from Kota. You know, but but you know, what is this? You know, uh, I said, no, no, no. I'm just wanting to ask. And then he was telling. I mean, I asked him since when you since eleventh you started preparing. He said, no, I did foundations also, did Kota also, everything. You know, and then I cracked it and came this and that. So he had a nine point five plus CGPA, <laughs> something, and. Uh, So then I was presenting to him after asking, uh, and I was telling him that you see, you started from class ninth, ah, uh, burning the midnight oil, working so hard, doing day and night studies, and then you came to IIT, and in IIT, I uh, know five years, dual degree, ah, uh, semester after semester to get a nine plus pointer, you know, working day and night. and now again six more months of uh, no i mean not six months two three months of job life so if you try to scale it up it's more than nine years of endeavors it's more than nine years of endeavors of dedication for the cause of an electron and the study of an electron the mechanics and dynamics and the utility patterns of the electron which you don't believe in by your own philosophy because you don't see it and therefore you should not believe in it but you have dedicated your 9 years of life for that cause do you have right to speak to me whether i should uh, dedicate my life to god or not by your own logic you should first resign from your company forsake your entc degree and then come and talk to me he couldn't answer he could not answer this so the point to note is that in life 
we cannot be as gross as as blind as as just saying that yes i cannot see god anywhere Hello. then that's something that's something which is childish because that is something which is uh, no uh, which is so so blunt and so gross is it not real intelligence lies in trying to read between the lines is it not real intelligence lies in trying to observe patterns in the vast expanse of reality that is a scientist who can observe patterns even in today's day and age if you want to make money so many things are happening so many things are happening around but one who can analyze and come up with some patterns such a person uh, such a person uh, becomes valuable in today's day and age what is data analytics and big data analytics all about people are doing different moves and people people don't know that their moves have some value you know, just like in day to day life you know when you are say on your social media or you are uh, you know accessing emails or whatsapp then in general many of us don't even realize that you know sometimes uh, most of the time is just casual it's just day to day routine it's just time pass so even we don't understand the value of this information but that person who can derive some value out of this usage patterns which is what is called as big data analytics such a person can make millions of dollars out of it that's intelligence is it not and that's what we stand for and therefore intelligence lies in understanding the unseen within the seen or behind the scene that's the point so yes the world is so arranged that god is not explicitly visible but everywhere we can see the facilitation the stamp of god so just like a novel can speak about the novelist similarly an art can speak about the artist in a similar way the creation speaks of the creator who creates and maintains this beautiful and harmonious universe what to say of you know designing a machinery you know if you if you go to research even if it is applied research just to publish a paper a research paper it may takes 2 to 3 years of a rigorous hard work to be able to establish footing converting the paper into a design <laughs> and a design into a scalable product oh that's a whole lot of exercise whole lot of exercise that's it that it requires a whole lot of endeavors so who has created this beautiful and harmonious universe so we'll quickly embark on uh, a visual meditation on and uh, to understand that yes if we see the world around us that's a good enough resume to be able to explain to us of who is god is it not just like when you apply when you want to apply to companies you know in your final year then it's going to be uh, uh, then actually uh, uh most of the companies will first first level of access is based on your resume because your resume shows who you are i mean basically what you have done means who you are or how much you have achieved also speaks about you know who you are is it not so similarly nature is god's resume nature around is god's resume
So, what you're seeing is uh, world famous paintings by some of the world famous artists. When we see a painting of nature, immediately the question which pops up in the head is, wow, who made this? Or who has drawn this? Who is the painter? And yes, these paintings uh, are drawn by world famous painters. So when we see a painting of nature, immediately the question comes, who is the artist? But when we see the nature in reality of which it was just a painting before, when we see that nature in reality, where does this question, uh, where, where does the question go? Where did it got sublimated? Who is the artist? Okay, so there is a question, if God exists, why does he stop us, if I, I believe if I get that question right, uh, why does he uh, not stop us from polluting the environment, right, from polluting, uh, from destroying the nature? Yes, why not he prevents us from destroying nature? The nature is a facilitation given by Lord to us, for our care. So, It's not that God doesn't prevent us. And now, first of all, the God has given us warning. And the God has given us the manual, how to utilize nature. When you go, uh, nowadays, I mean, you all don't have labs right now, but uh, when the, uh, you know, when the, uh, when the KGP doors open up for you know, uh, physical entry, then you can see in labs, there are so many machines, like in manufacturing lab, you can have CNC machine and lathe machine. So any such machine has an operator manual. Not only a manual, any such machine has a, a training, which is supposed to be given. And that training is, uh, that training tells you how to utilize the machine. The machine aids the person. But every machine has a manual along with it, and every machine has uh, a training which is given. And if one undergoes that sincerely and nicely, then one can utilize the machinery perfectly uh, and benefit by that. But now, after getting the training, if one is messing up with the machinery or one is callous in the usage of the machinery and the machinery gets burnt or spoiled or if the machinery and you know, or if there is an accident and somebody gets hit by that machine, who is at fault? Who is at fault? Is the training professor at fault? Is the IIT director at fault? Is the IIT management system at fault? The question is who is at fault? The person who is using the machine. The person who got the license to use the machine. Now we may say, okay, if the person has spoiled the machine, will there be some action which will be taken against him? Obviously, yes. Is it not? Just like it happens. Now if you spoil uh, a machine, then there is going to be an action. Is it not? One may have to pay the penalty and so on. And one may never be allowed to be given a license to misuse like that. In a similar fashion, the Lord along with, now Lord has given us nature, that nature helps us and facilitates us. But this nature has not come on its own. It's not that we have to figure out how to get used to it or how to use it. 
If a common man can give a manual, why can't God give a manual? So what is a manual? How to use material nature? God has given a manual and that manual is called as Shastras, the Vedas. Vedas are a manual. And if you refer to that manual and imbibe the training modules which the Vedas are giving us, which the saintly people are giving us, the Acharyas are giving us, then we can utilize this machinery of Mother Nature very nicely. And that can help us, that can help entire humanity. But if we misuse, you will see we are going to lose access to it. And we are the losers. We are the losers. That's the whole point. So this pollution and the, the, the wholesome, rampant uh, exploitation of environment which is happening is definitely a case of misuse. And now the question is, are we not getting punished? When we play with nature, does nature not retaliate and punish us? That's the point. So that punishment comes. When we are tampering environment, you are seeing that our lives are also going to become miserable, is it not? Seasons are becoming unpredictable. Agricultural crops are blowing up. No. The diseases, uh, percentage of diseases is increasing. People's lifestyles are becoming unhealthier. Their minds are getting, uh, their mindsets are exploding. These are all nature's retaliations, is it not? So many new diseases are coming up. So many new diseases are coming up. And that, that, that's another way we can understand. Nature does retaliate, is it not? When we try to break the principles of nature, then nature retaliates. So we are prevented and we lose the license to use. To use, is it not? Just like, say for example, land is given for agriculture. Now land has... Land can produce a lot of, uh, no, uh, the, the, the land can go on producing, is it not? But now human greed gets involved in it. And then human greed, what it does is that it pours fertilizers, chemicals, so basically chemicals in the name of fertilizers, and now to extract more and more yield, more and more yield. This, this had happened in India in the name of green revolution and all that, and more and more yield. And then what happens by that? After five years, the land becomes barren. So that's the point. Mishandling leads to loss of license. And then the land is barren. Now it can no, no further grow crops. So the person has lost it for a whole lifetime. The license is lost. So there is a prevention. There is a prevention. So the need is to refer to the manual and lead a God-centered life. Then we can live our lives much better. Let's move ahead. Okay. Okay, let's see. I believe the slideshow got stuck off. Just give me a minute. Okay. Thank you. When somebody gives you a greeting card, having a rose or a flower, and we like it, Immediately the question we ask is, okay, where did you get it from? Did you get it from Archie's? Did you get it from Archie's? Now the question is, uh, if a greeting card having a drawing of a lotus cannot come uh, on its own, cannot come out of some random chance, how can the actual flower come about like that? Is it not? A painting of a rose or a painting of a lotus if you try to think about, okay, what is the attractive attribute in that? You may say, yes, it has a good shape. It's looking appealing. I mean, it, it has a good shape. I mean, it looks beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a two-dimensional good shape, symmetry. A three-dimensional uh, plastic model of a lotus. 
what are the attractive attributes in that? Again, we can say now the shape is uh, instead of two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional, the symmetry, the shape, the color. Now, if we compare this to a real rose or a real lotus, what are the attractive attributes in that? Yes, there is three-dimensional shape, there is symmetry, there is color, but in addition to that, there is softness, is it not? There is aroma, and there is taste. Ruavza. So when something having uh, two attractive attributes, this is a 2D shape symmetry, cannot come by chance, when a model of the rows, uh, having say three uh, attractive attributes uh, and a 3D you know, shape, color, symmetry can come by chance, cannot come by chance. How can the actual rows and lotus come by chance? Is it not? So there it is explained, if you want to make an artificial rose, it is a, it is a whole lot of a technique, you know, which in childhood many people you know, interface and, 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 and actually it takes time. I have tried it in my childhood, it's not that simple, you know, I mean, it's intricate. I mean, you really have to spend time, learn it properly, origami, you know. You simply have to learn it nicely and then only you can make it. So the artistry implies the artist. Okay, so let's talk about spiders. Scientists figured out that the material in spider's web uh, is superlative in terms of strength in terms of uh, strength to weight ratio. So they did experiments, they found out that if you take uh, a steel, steel strand, if you take a steel strand of the same diameter as the material, the, the spider's web, then the material of the spider's web is five times more stronger than steel of the same diameter. In fact, the, uh, the material of the spider's web In fact, the material of the spider's web Am I audible? Okay. Uh, some technical issues it seems. Okay. In fact, the material of the spider's web, you can take that material, encapsulate or encirculate, I mean, uh, circumambulate or encircle the entire earth and, uh, and that much material which is required to encircle the earth will only weigh one kg. That's how powerful that material is. So many scientists were, talking, you know, were trying to understand what is this material and to you know, synthesize it artificially and many companies like DuPont uh, you know, jumped into it and then uh, they came up with an imitation of the material of the spider's web. And by the way, this it, it very poorly mimics the material of the spider's web. I mean, there is, a, there, is a, there is a huge gulf of a difference between the actual material of the spider's web and this material which people have come up with. Uh, but then by far and large, whatever has been you know, that, that poor into imitation which scientists have uh, you know, synthesized artificially, that is uh, claimed as, or that is called as words, uh, uh, the hardest material ever known till date, and that is called as Kevlar. It is heavily used in uh, uh, bulletproof jackets and uh, rocket propellants, where there is a need for a very less weight, but a very terrific uh, strength tensile strength, Kevlar. So now the question comes here. The point comes this, that you see when the spider is, uh, uh, is uh, 
is actually producing or oozing out or spitting out that material, uh, you know, it's not that you know, in the spider's neck, there are all these various chemical bottles you know, and the spider has done the full simulation and, 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 and the spider is actually, you know, in that, you know, and now the spider is with full calculations, you know, the spider is understanding that you know, in what angle, in what meter at, and, and in what kind of churning and what kind of mixing of various elements should I spit out that that hardest material comes out, is it not? The spider just spits too, you know. And what comes out is the, you know, uh, world's hardest material. Now the question is that this creature, this tiny little creature, the spider, uh, definitely this material is not a product of the spider's brain. So, who has given the superlative technology? Anna, as a gift to the spider, is it that? That's where we are talking about. Beautiful organization speaks about the organizer. So it's not spider's intelligence, it is God's intelligence. Likewise, we see wonderful things created by man. We see sleek cars, but someone manufactured it. Any computers, but someone assembled it. Elegant watch, someone designed it. Architectural marvels, someone erected it. Skyscraper buildings, someone built it. Wonderful sculptures, but someone carved it. Shouldn't this universe have a super intelligent creator too? We have no experience of anything coming without a creator. Anything coming without a creator. Therefore creation implies creator. Yes. A giant in a tiny package. What you're seeing is the size of the seed of the world's largest trees. These trees are more than 300 feet high. Ah. Uh, redwood trees or sequoia trees. So such a giant, such a giant. So this, uh, so these sequoia trees, if you stand in front of these trees, you're going to look like a mosquito. It's 300 feet high. It's more than the Statue of Liberty. Or almost the same size as this. <laughs> uh, I believe it's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, I think it's more than the Statue of Liberty. Uh, 300 feet uh, is the size of one tree. A tree like this lives for, uh, no, Sequoia has a lifespan of 3,000 years. Uh, if 30 of us were to stand like this, then only we'll be able to embrace it. It has a four feet bark, which makes it uh, fireproof. It has a four feet bark, which makes it uh, fireproof actually. So that's Sikua, such a huge tree, you know. If you want to put basketballs inside the hollow of one tree, you can put 180,000 basketballs inside. The wood of one tree can make uh, 56 rooms, flats, houses. 
that sequoia, such a giant. And what we are seeing is the seed of the sequoia. Now this is called as, now we can say, wow, this is marvelous. But uh, yes, this is marvelous. But uh, if you try to understand, this is what is called as packaging technology, is it not? And we see uh, remises of this packaging technology. Uh, you can see actually people are sitting and there is a sequoia next to it. You know? So this is redwood trees, so sequoia trees actually. Uh, huge. So this is packaging, a giant in a tiny package. You know? In electronics, we can see remises of this technology. Now the drive of electronic research is to come up uh, you know, to put more and more components, you know, MOSFETs, uh, uh, you know, more and more FETs, uh, 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 to dope, you know, to dope more and more these field effect transistors on a single small chip, actually. Then, uh, so when I was a student, that time we were hearing from a professor from ISI, and he had told her, okay, we are able to make it to uh, uh, one million, you know, components, uh, one million components, one million components, uh, uh, on a single uh, uh, microprocessor chip, actually, a single microprocessor. One million components can be fabricated. And then he said that the next level of the research is now to, to just increase it a hundred times, you know, that's it, from one million to one billion, you know. Uh, and then we were thinking, wow, this is so nice, you know, one million is already there and we're going to make it one billion, it's so amazing. And, uh, and then we were asking the professor, sir, in how many years it will be done, you know. Uh, in five years, ten, uh, five years, uh, I, we were thinking five years, eight years. He said, nothing doing. It is so intricate. It is so difficult. He said, five years and 30 years, you know, we may be able to achieve the target or something. So, so the point is that, and then he was explaining how it is intricate because uh, it is so, uh, uh, it is such a small scale, nanoscale of granularity, which we are talking about and uh, nanoscale, pico scales actually. So the circuitries break, the channels break actually. And then the current flows, there is so much heat, so much components that may burn up the chip, so many issues that he was telling. That is technology, is it not? Similarly, you see sometimes, you know, when this Blackberry came, Blackberry became so famous. Why? Because in the Blackberry, you know, in one small you know, phone, you can achieve so many functionalities, so many functionalities. So that's the point. It's a small black looking machine, actually. This is a small little machine. But what is uh, embedded in that machine, you know? So when buttons flow or hands flow, you know, when the buttons flow, then the circuitry unflows. That, okay, there are so many, you know, features in that machine, it's as good as a computer, you know, like that. So in a similar way, actually, the Seiko seed was looking so small and tiny, no, not even a centimeter, actually. But then when time flows into it, the circuitry which is embedded inside it, the embedded system circuitry is uh, manifest so powerfully. So that means that there is definitely intelligence, superlative intelligence uh, behind the functioning of the nature. Just to give you a glimpse of what a sequel. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's anywhere between 200 to 300 feet, correct. It's 30 meters, 95, 100 feet in diameter. 100 feet in diameter. Yeah. So, yeah, it's almost the size of Statue of Liberty. A little longer than that. So yes, talking about microprocessors and talking about uh, intelligence. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let, let's come to the uh, and, uh, let, let's let's talk about uh, 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 <laughs> let's talk about the most powerful computer you know which we can interface the human brain. You know. It is explained the human brain can store more information uh, than all the libraries in the whole world, actually. So, so if you talk about intelligence, so that, that's, that, that's human brain. Uh, the most powerful computer, you can say, uh, not till late, the human brain. It is explained human brain can access uh, information. Uh, it can store information worth 17.5 uh, million books. That's the power of human brain. 
And now people may talk about, yes, intelligence. And then now if you talk about intelligence, and there is a hype that the hot area in the world is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been, artificial intelligence has been, uh, enough, uh, uh, has been the captivating buzzword uh, since, uh, since I believe uh, three decades actually. And it still continues to be the topmost buzzword, actually. Uh, you know, even today, actually, the, you will see as you progress ahead that uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning is the buzzword, actually. When you sit for placements, people will say, okay, do you know machine learning? And if, if you know, then you're, you're going to get a double, triple top up of your salary, actually. People looking for, you know, AI, uh, engineers, you know, machine learning, engineers, artificial intelligence, actually. So... So a layman's interface to artificial intelligence can be that, yes, okay, here was uh, Anna, Gary Kasparov uh, and uh, Anna some time back, and Gary Kasparov was uh, playing chess uh, uh, with a computer, you know, like that. And lo and behold, he lost it. So, so you may say, yes, machines have become that intelligent. This is not. Machines have become that intelligent. So now let's try to understand uh, a little bit of, uh, now from a layman's point of view of, of what has happened actually. So machine learning algorithms are basically built on, uh, on real data, on real human data actually. So these, uh, the computer actually just running the, the codes, the machine learning codes, uh, which actually defeated say Gary Kasparov. Uh, I mean, that was by the company Deep Blue. Uh, so, uh, so they, uh, I mean, Deep Blue was later you know, taken over or purchased by Google. So, it's not, you know. so, uh, so now these codes actually, how the machine understands and you know, learns what kind of moves it should play. So then what it is, uh, what was done was that uh, or, or not, the, the machine learning works on ground data. And ground data means that now when it applies to chess, if you want to make a machine play chess, then what is the machine? The machine is fed the situation, the various chess uh, no, situations, uh, and the moves which grandmasters, uh, world grandmasters over decades have been playing. You see, many of these moves are recorded. The whole game is recorded. All such games are fed to the machine. Then when the machine understands, you know, there's so much of data and that means so many of hundreds of grandmasters, uh, you know, moves of various chess competitions which they have played and all that is fed to the machine and the machine starts understanding and crunching out patterns, you know, like that. And now this is the machine which has been trained and now this machine is sitting in front of Gary Kasparov. So basically it is not just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, so basically, if you see, it is intelligence, stored intelligence of hundreds of grandmasters in front of one grandmaster. So naturally, Gary Kasparov lost. <laughs> That's the point. So, so that means that even in artificial intelligence, there is nothing artificial. Uh, no, I mean, so there is nothing artificial even in artificial intelligence. It is all real intelligence which is stored and which is channelized through the artificial intelligence AI algorithms actually. So now the point is that, now what to say of, uh, uh, you know, uh, so what to say of, you know, uh, uh, what to say of uh, you know, making real intelligence, even to mimic it uh, requires uh, so much of intelligence. That's the point that this natural intelligence which is existing is there is, is a testimony of a superb creator having a super intelligence. That's God. Now if you go down from the micro world to the macro world, we see the double helical DNA structure. You know? It is so complex. What to say off? Now we were talking about initially about the you know the statement the whole world can come by chance. If you apply, can we apply this to the double helical structure DNA? Such a complicated structure. What to say of DNA coming by chance? You cannot even draw it by chance. And if somebody thinks that he can draw it by chance, he will get zero in the exam by chance. So 
Similarly, you see the Brava star structure now. BCC, FCC. Uh, no. You see, when we alter the PVD conditions, then one lattice structure changes at best to another lattice structure. So even at such an atomic level, there is order, there is design. Talking about allotropes is the same element carbon, but the way in which uh, the way in which it is aligned completely changes its properties. Completely changes its properties. So, so basically, we will see. Okay, what is the difference? It is the difference between the alignment, you know, and how they are ordered, you know, like that. Then the alignment means that okay, yes, there is a difference between bond angles. Uh, so and, and 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 the difference between the bond angles changes the properties from uh, no, uh, the a soft material to the hard uh, to a very hard material, which is what is carbon, uh, which is what is diamond and graphite all about, which is what allotropes is all about. It's 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 a difference in the orientation, or you can say yes, geometry, or or you can say yes, it's uh, bond angles. Now that means that everything is so precise. The, the extent of bond angles which are existing is so precise actually. So this preciseness requires much more intelligence. It cannot be random at all. And this precision is not physically enforced runtime, lifetime. You know, it's not live, it is being you know, somehow or the other maintained like that. This precision is automated, is it not? Now automation requires even further intelligence, is it not? So just like you can say when there is missile technology, then we can understand that how much the angle, maintaining or ensuring the angle uh, is important. Because if there is a difference of even a few seconds in the, in the angle of shooting the missile, then probably instead of uh, no, Kashmir, the missile may land up in, uh, no, in uh, Gujarat, is it not? Or if not Gujarat, Rajasthan, is it not? So that's the whole point. The the angle. So now to maintain that orientation requires so much of intelligence. And if you want to maintain it by automation, it requires even more intelligence. So that's how if we can just see around, look at the world around us, we can see that yes, there is order. You see the planets, they are floating like a swab of cotton. When we have to send satellites into the uh, into their orbits, then there is millions of dollars which have to be spent. Hundreds of scientists uh, are 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 just sitting, you know, monitoring parameters uh, and trying to launch. And then also we see that so many uh, of our you know uh, satellites which we launch, uh, they get lost. Like you know, the like the Challenger, Discovery, Columbia. So many of them, uh, no, they don't get into the orbit or so many of them don't land back. And even if they are successful, you know, the, the, our uh, no, man-made satellites, they have uh, a lifespan of just a few decades, that's it. Whereas the natural satellites, the planets which were existing all around, yes, we know that they also have a lifetime, but that is at least millions of years. That means understanding and seeing the universe, we can understand that the creator behind this universe is at least having a million times or millions of times intelligence than us. The sun never gets up late like us. It comes on a precise time, is it not? No. Earth has such a high speed motion around the sun, it's 106,000 uh, kilometers per hour. And, uh, and uh, you see this has such a high speed, high speed motion means such a high speed motion. And scientists say that if the distance uh, between the earth and the sun were to change even by a millimeter, life would not have been possible. Just try to understand how much precision, how much precision is required. When you go to purchase cloth, people say, no, is it not? Every product and industry has a 5%, 8% uh, margin error. That okay, this much is okay. 
this much is okay but what is the margin error you know uh, in terms of the earth and the sun distance even if it changes by 1 mm life will not be possible this is how uh, precise our universe is and this automated precision requires uh, a super intelligence god so who is in control that's the question is it not definitely it's not nasa <laughs> So, if traffic policeman controls the traffic, then who controls the traffic of revolving planets? Yes, that's why we can understand that design implies designer. Yeah. Similarly, we can see now in a, in a second, our sun produces enough energy to meet the current needs of the entire Earth for five lakh years. So now can you imagine what to say of uh, now can you imagine how much intelligence is required to light the entire you know universe it is intelligence it is technology why because you know now you can see when there is stadiums like you know the eden garden calcutta or mcg in melbourne you know so to to have a day and night tournament it will require lakhs of rupees of lighting arrangements is it not you know can you think of you know taking a big like project to light the whole of calcutta <laughs> you know it's not easy at all and this is the sun yeah every second 600 million tons of protons are converted into helium atoms by the sun to be released as energy so energy implies the energetic so if you look at the world around us we see that everything around us is governed by laws in our college starts at a particular timing the question is the law is made by someone and probably the principal or the director or the dean In India, the law is keep left. In America, the law is keep right. Keep left, keep right. So now the question again is that who made the law? It's the traffic police, is it not? Cricket has laws, so that means even a game has laws, is it not? I mean, you know, there is a fixed number of overs, you know, based on whether it's a test match, a one-day match, an IPL series, you know, there's a fixed number of players. You know, there is a fixed distance between the wickets. You know, there are rules. You know, because there are rules, the sport or the game is enjoyable, is it not? Now, just imagine if there is a cricket and there are no rules in that, is it not? Anybody can bowl in any direction. Anybody can run in any direction, is it not? then it is going to be very chaotic is it not there is no fun in that right but when there are rules there are laws and people adhere to those laws then it's 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 fun it's sport it's adventure it's amazing is it not like that so in that sense we can understand so so here we are coming to the point of understanding that yes uh we will see that in our life also there are laws laws govern us and one should not get intimidated by the thought that yes we are also governed by laws just like uh, in cricket uh, when there are laws and we stand by those laws and follow the laws then we well, you know one can become a man of the match is it not a man of the series is it not a world champion the same thing happens in life as well yeah uh, it's called as a periodic table you know not the chance table <laughs> and yeah, no? so the periodic law the chemical arrangement follows the periodic law not the periodic chance so you see if uh, math i mean if physics uh, and electronics don't have any laws uh, none of us are going to have jobs because there are laws uh, uh, then we can actually tap those laws into machinery and then use it <laughs> so like that now what you are seeing here is uh, the apple falling on newton said is it not now the question is that was gravitation or is gravitation newton's law or is it god's law <laughs> newton just happened to discover it and uh, uh it is actually god's law 
Uh, therefore, one of our acharyas makes a point that, uh, that yes, one should give the Nobel Prize to the God, you know? not the scientist, because the scientist can only tap or discover, but the law is actually uh, enforced or the law is uh, enforced by God. In this way, everything in material energy or in matter follows laws. So the micro world is following laws, the macro world is following laws. We will see that our day to day lives are governed by laws. And that's how we can understand that yes, we are totally governed by laws holistically also. And laws implies lawmaker. So the point is, yes, we are governed by laws. How do we understand that? Somebody is beautiful, somebody is ugly, somebody is handsome, somebody is not so handsome. A rich man, the poverty stricken man. So one person is an MD doctor, another person is a laborer. Now the question is, who decides? We choose our education, we choose our job, we can choose our husband, our wife, our spouse. But there are many things which we cannot choose. We don't choose our parents and we just open our eyes and see, you know, I mean, the, the, the one doesn't choose one's parents, is it not? We don't choose our face cut. It's all there, whatever is there, that's all that is there actually. <laughs> like there was one particular actress, uh, uh, no Bollywood actress actually, and, uh, and, 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 and her fans used to appreciate a lot, but they had one point, you know, that, uh, that her nose was a little sharp and pointed you know, like that. So, uh, so it is explained that, uh, or, or, or we got news that she did more than a dozen, uh, you know, uh, surgeries <laughs> like that. But then also fans were telling that she looks pretty much the same, not much difference actually. We cannot change the face cut. We cannot change our intelligence as well. You know? Some people uh, sit down for studies uh, one day before the exam and they can crack a nine point. Whereas others uh, will be slogging from the first day. If you look at them, you will feel like everyone gets inferiority complex. This person will crack. Uh, 11 point. Uh, but then you see in the results of the semester examinations, the poor fellow may be just passing with a 6.5. Who chooses and on what basis? Is it by chance? So our birth, beauty, intelligence cannot be random events. They are governed by laws and those laws are coming from God. And that is what is described as the law of karma. That's what is what is being described as the law of karma. The law of, uh, or you can say, now, the law of karma is a generalization of Newton's third law of motion. Uh, uh, it's basically cause and effect phenomena. To every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So we are responsible for our deeds as a so, so shall you reap. That's the law of karma, actually. But the law of karma has, or this doctrine of karma, or the science of karma has a very important, uh, uh, has a very important, uh, 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 has a very important role in our lives. And the law of karma is quite, uh, has a very important role in our lives. Many times when people misunderstand or they don't understand properly what is this law of karma all about, then uh, there is a lot of you and Kirai. Like many times people say, okay, if God exists, why is there suffering and so on. Uh, all of that is uh, because of lack of understanding of the principles of karma, actually. A lack of proper understanding of the principles of karma. So, uh, so when we understand that uh, now as we sow, so shall we reap, then that's that is what makes a person responsible. Is it not? That's what, I, that's what makes a person responsible. Is it not? Uh, that's what makes a person responsible. So let's try to uh, get a feel, uh, a little bit feel of uh, what is this uh, you know, doctrine of karma all about. You know, I'll give you three examples. Uh, it is cause and effect. So now as I'm telling you the three examples, please meditate and try to figure out what are the similarities between the three examples and what is the difference. The first example, if you happen to see next week, uh, no, uh, or, or if you happen to see sometime, you know, uh, a burn scar in my hand, immediately you may ask the question, how did God burn? Example two. A person is having 
very intense pain in the stomach oh half pain in the stomach like that and he goes to the doctor the doctor tests him and the doctor asks him a question what did you eat yesterday night example three A patient is feeling, uh, you know, breathing problems. You know, in his, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he's, he's he's feeling breathing problems. The doctor takes his test and sees the test reports. And then he asks him the question that uh, when did you start smoking? So if you see three examples, what is the similarity? What is the difference? Yes, definitely. All of the three examples are talking about cause and effect. There is a cause which leads to the effect right nothing is happening by chance it's a cause and effect phenomena you ignite and you see the effect is it not so so this is uh, so this is cause and effect right that's a similarity and what is the difference between the three the difference between the three is in terms of the time scale if one puts his hand in fire, immediately it will get burnt. If one overeats say McDonald's pizzas, then uh, over a period of six hours, there will be a stomach upset. No. When one starts smoking, then it may take two, three years for, uh, you know, for a lung disease to take place. So, uh, now there is a cause and there is an effect, but in different cases, there is a different time duration between the three. So now the time duration is elongated more and more, so much so that one is seeing an effect, but one is not able to correlate it back with what cause it maps to. You know? That correlation one is not able to draw, then that's where a person starts questioning, why me? Many times people say that, many, many, many times you must have heard people speaking about it, that you know, okay, here was an upright soul, what wrong did I do, I am an upright soul, I am a pious person, what to do? So why it happened to me? It happened because there was a cause, sometime remotely back. And because of which the effect is coming now. Because of which the effect is coming. So the Shastras give a beautiful analogy that are giving the analogy of uh, you know a storage drum many times uh, grossers what they do is that they store the grains in a drum these drums are huge they are like uh, you know full floor size you know, drums uh, and then you can pour the grains from the top but you want to take out the grains down there is a tap you can open the tap open the tap and take out the grains so now the point is that suppose if three years back the grains which were put were of a very poor quality, very poor great grains were put. But now presently the person is putting uh, uh, no, top class, A class, uh, no, A plus class grains like that. If you open the tap, what you will get, now what one will get is the third class grains. Is it not? Now one may say, okay, I am putting in first class grains, but why am I getting out the third class grains? Why? Because that was put before. This is how the Shastras explain the principles of karma. So sometimes we will see that for owing to the previous uh, sinful activities, a person may be you know, receiving uh, painful reactions. But if one tunes his life uh, to feed in uh, good quality grains, that means pious and good activities, then very soon that old stock will get over. And one will get out the first class rice. You know? And one's lunch, breakfast, dinner are going to become very delicious. That's the whole point. And now in the in the breakfast, lunch, and dinner of life. So, so therefore, we see that uh, the law of karma has to be understood. It is the law of karma is for our benefit. So it's 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 very easy to say that okay, because suffering exists. Uh, uh, there's, because suffering exists, then there is uh, that means there is no God. So, now we have to understand that suffering or punishment uh, is a way uh, is the way of training. In fact, suffering is the way of training and pointing to us that we are uh, we are deviating from the right track. 
we are getting bewildered and bewitched we have to behave ourselves is it not just like you will see uh, in your iit curriculum you're going to see that it's not that at the end of four years or five years you just have one grand exam every semester mid sims and m sims i mean now there is continuous evaluation going on but even when there are mid sims and end sims then also you know any teacher any time takes evaluation is it not and now to anyways in online there is continuous evaluation going on any time there is a test is it not one has to be ready all the time is it not so now these small small tests which exist you know weekly weekly then they are not meant to torture the child uh, not to torture the student to prove that he doesn't know anything they are meant to prepare him is it not now suppose a candidate he gets a zero in the test and now he's seeing all of them you know all the students have got 18 on 20 17 on 20 you know the lowest is uh, 12 on 20 or something like that then immediately that leads to very uh, you know huge amount of embarrassment oh i got a zero or oh, you know in the class of 80 i got a zero or oh, you know so the person gets uh, you know at intrigue or triggered to study is it not but now if he studies to improve his next test marks ultimately what is happening is that he is studying for the ensem is it not rather than you know failing in the ensem and this test test marks may not be even one mark in the final exam but 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 it triggers it uh, uh no coaxes or or it uh, no pokes the person to come on the right track the right track that's what that's exactly what suffering can do to our lives just like exam is there to help us similarly the law of karma which is based on the principles of cause and effect the reward and punishment is there to help us out help us out so we should see suffering in that uh, in a proper light actually that now if we do not have any punishment if we do not have any feedback which is given to us in terms of small small sufferings then how will we understand that we are going wrong is it not there has to be some indicator right so we'll see just like you know uh, so that's that's how uh, that's how we can understand is it not otherwise it's very difficult to understand in fact this reward and punishment is a standard way of teaching or training any person if he fund us good then he is uh, rewarded and if he fund us bad then there is some penalty or punishment is it not that's what law of karma is all about so the entire law of karma is not a stigma on the face of you know god and shastra but actually the entire law of karma uh, uh, is basically uh, an expression of god's mercy because it's there to help us in its true spirit in fact the law of karma is an expression of god's love for us now you may say okay love for us you know i mean we can see or understand god as a judge okay if you do right things he rewards us if you do wrong things he punishes us because uh, you know we are creating a mess uh, in the you know world order or you can say in human for, for the world order for humanity so that's why the god may punish us but how so that way the judgment aspect is understandable but how is it an expression of god's love let's try to see that by an example um uh, but there was a small child you know he saw in the drawing room in one of the racks actually uh was get a packet of uh, very attractive uh, now white balls in the child uh, in his childishness he mistook them to be uh, rasgulla and he he became very excited thought yeah wow there is rasgulla you know and there are so many of them there are 50 of them and the elder brother has gone to the school and i can gobble it up all and mother is cooking right now she is not watching also and everything i can take so the child uh, was trying to hurry up uh, towards the the rack uh, uh but all of a sudden the child heard his mother calling out for him what are you doing hello all of a sudden the child got a little alarmed said no 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 i am not doing anything i am just nothing doing and you know, all like that and and by his response the mother could understand that there is something fishy and after that this child was completely quiet because he was trying to go uh to just grab that packet of uh, what was looking like rasgullas but actually it was not rasgullas it was naphthalene balls 
So that the child was not creating any sound. It was, uh, no, and, 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 and many times the mothers have six hands. The mother could understand something is fishy. So she poked out and then she poked out. She was seeing the child and you now heading towards uh, the rack. And now the mother could figure out that this fellow is up to some mischief. And the mother is saying, what are you heading to? And he said, no, no, nothing. I'm not heading to anything. And the mother said, what is that? That, that you're not going to get. And the child is saying, no, rasgulla, no. And the mother is saying, no, it is not rasgulla, it is chichi. No. Uh, it will harm you, it is chichi, chichi. Today evening, we'll go to the market, we'll get good rasgullas for you. White colored, big one, small one, green colored, orange colored, yellow color, you can eat everything. But this is not rasgulla, go and do your studies. You know, you uh, memorize your nursery poems, you know, like that. And the child... The child was not ready to listen. So the child was quiet, but he was not convinced. And as soon as the mother went into the kitchen, then again he started. And the mother came out again to check. When she saw, she knew, because the mother knows the child. So, and she started warning him. They go, you better behave yourself. And the child was thinking, okay, now I am caught. And now what to do? You know, like that. Uh, and the mother was chastising. And the mother was telling, you better behave yourself. I'll give you a tight slap. You know? And uh, and the child was thinking that is every day's dose, you know, that's okay, you know, what to do, some price you have to pay. And the mother was understanding, this fellow not hearing. And the mother started shouting at the top of her lungs, to please behave yourself. And she started telling, I'll complain to the father. And the child started considering, father's uh, slap is, you know, a little tight one, you know, oh, you know, like that. But then the child started thinking, what to do, you know. And then he thought, okay, no problem, you know, one tear glides from my eyes and the father will melt down, you know, he's in my pockets. I'll take it up. So now the child was having this consciousness, you know, he was singing the song, Sarfaroshi, Kitamanna, you know, like that. And he was thinking, now I'll go and grab it, like that. So when the mother would come, chest eyes, he would be quiet, and then again he would move, like that. And now the mother came after some time, and she was seeing that the child is, uh, is there at the rack, and these naphthalene balls are in his hands. And he's just about to, you know, eat it up. No. And in this particular situation, the mother, you know, you know she throws the, you know, uh, the spoon, the, the cooking spoon from her hand, you know, falls out from her hand. The mother comes dashing towards the child. The mother comes rushing towards the child, you know, and he catches hold of his hand, makes him throw all the balls, and the mother gives him a tight slap on the face. And such a tight one on the face that the small child is uh, is is is, is uh, no, the, the small child is kidding and making saucer and then he falls with his face or not dashing against the ground in the midst of it or, or in in that whole scene now uh, no, he he's, uh, he falls with his face thrashing against the ground with a big thud you know the buttons of his shirt are broken his knicker has you know half come out and that is the predicament of the small child. And now the small child is thinking that my mother is so cruel. You know that neighboring auntie shows so nice. She gives me a chocolate. And my mother didn't allow me to eat rasgulla. I was only eating rasgullas. And my mother is so cruel that she has done such a you know, treatment like that. So the child is thinking like this. Now just imagine, suppose if the child's friend comes, you know, at this particular time only, at the climax time, and you know, to play with him and then this friend is seeing you know what the mother is doing and how the mother came and slapped the child and how the child is kidding so the friend is seeing that and if he takes a photo shoot you know and uh, and then uh, and uh, and then he makes a research paper out of it and he publishes it in IEEE saying that this mother is uh, so cruel and she's like a witch is it correct that is the point so many times we can quote some one of uh, no incident saying that you know this happened uh, this misfortune happened that calamity happened and so on therefore the suffering is there therefore god is not there it is very easy to speak like that it is very easy to speak like that but that's not the fabric or that's not the factor of reality the point is that, the point to note is that for a mother, it takes more love to slap the child than to embrace the child. And the same thing is true for God.
सो पनिशमेंट इज ओनली कमिंग एज अ लास्ट रिसॉर्ट टू रेस्क्यू द पर्सन फ्यूचर दैट्स अ पॉइंट you know you see the point is that you know even police say for example they apply the third degree only when the person is so adamant and stubborn that's the point so the lord has given us the manuals how to live in this world in the form of the shastras the lord sends his devotees time to time to train us to a life of well being and happiness the lord takes various incarnations uh the lord has provided us with all facilities there is mother nature there is instructions there are devotees there are shastras and if despite all this the living entity or the person is so adamant to do sinful activities the lord speaks from gives warnings from within that is called as conscience is it not the lord gives warnings from within is it not you see an upright person has no fear he can walk boldly but a person who is vicious who is sinful such a person the lord speaks from within there are loud speakers from within which are saying behave yourself don't do this this is wrong it will harm you it will hurt you more than what it will hurt others in the world it will hurt you but if the person is so stubborn and intoxicated and so mad that he is not going to listen then you know then, then there is a saying in hindi which is say that lato ke bhoot baaton se nahi mante and therefore we can try to understand that yes this law of karma is the expression of lord's love for us Sorry. Okay. Many scientists speak about God as well. Lord Kelvin says, if you think strongly enough, you will be forced by science to believe in God. That means Lord Kelvin is saying that if there is a scientist and he says that God doesn't exist, then he is an amateur scientist. He is a neophyte. He has not gone deeper because if he goes deeper, then science will force him to believe in God. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just skipping through. Uh, but yes, that's the point. Uh, that when one goes deeper in nature, one gets a handle to God, is it not? Because that means everything is based on God. That's why we call it when we call about Mother Nature. We should ask the question: Who's nature? Actually, it's God's nature. Actually. and but but we don't have to uh, so the point is that but we don't have to you know spend a whole life in just trying to understand and get a feel that god exists i mean we can do much more better in our lives and in the lives of humanity by uh, by by accepting this point on the first day of you know reading the shastras and the shastras saying yes god does exist but then that's not the only point god has given us so many instructions and uh, Uh, which can uh, enrich the very fabric of our lives and if we can apply that then our lives can be much more sublime much more sublime okay so what is the origin of the universe is that is the question which is asked uh with the four options being uh, be, uh no, so 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 it's not big bang which is the creation of the universe it's not chance which is the creation of the universe but it is intelligent design which is the creation of the universe uh, no, which is the origin of the universe it's not big bang it's not uh so now the uh, no, the bangs do not create creation bangs can only create explosions is it not if you read the definition of uh, uh big bang theory you know from encyclopedia britannica it talks about that yes big bang means everything the whole universe is coming from a point and we say okay what is the characteristic of this point and then it says okay so the characteristics of this point is that it is uh, 
physically unrealizable. When we say, oh, physically unrealizable. Uh, mathematically unverifiable. Uh, so, uh, beyond all space concepts of time and space. Now, the question is then, what is the point in this point? Is it not? A point which you cannot realize, which you cannot envision, which you cannot even simulate, which you cannot even equate, then what is the point in that point? Now, one time when the Big Bang Theory was being uh, expounded and on the television, one person, you know, one construction builder got very much excited by it. So he thought, okay, if such a Big Bang can create the universe, then I'll do a small bang and it'll create uh, now at least a 20 story building. Is it not? So, and you can imagine, he, he went ahead doing the experiment. You know, he was like a scientist type of mentality and he went ahead going to do, doing the experiment and he can and with dynamite and all that, he, he did an uh, explosion in his construction site. So, I mean, it was not that big bang. I mean, it was a, you know, a small bang, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, I mean, from a planetary perspective, it was a small bang, but it was a big bang in his bank account. <laughs> so explosions do not, uh, uh, do not lead to any constructive results. So the point is to notice that, okay, what is more logical? Everything is coming from a point or uh, everything is coming from a point which is pointless. You know, it's, uh, it, it is illogical. I mean, there is no concept of logic, time, space, mathematical verification, physical realization. And now, uh, so everything is coming from the point or everything is coming from the Supreme Person. What is the purpose of the universe is the second million dollar question actually. So the purpose is not to eat, sleep and be merry. The purpose is not uh, no, uh, to simply waste time. Uh, the purpose is to understand God and the purpose is to understand life. So it's just like, suppose if you happen to uh, uh, go to the manufacturing lab and then you see a very, you know, like CNC is there, like you see a very new machinery is coming, uh, has come, which is very intricate, which is having so many levers. It is operated by computers and uh, it is auto operated and there are so many gadgets in it. They may say, wow, and they're calling it as, okay, universal testing machine, you know, it's a very complicated machine. And everybody's waiting for the professor to come and explain. And now the professor comes and then the students ask, okay, what is this machine? What does it do? Where it has come from? It is looking so gorgeous. You know, CNC is looking like, uh, you know, uh, shabby in front of this one, you know. So what does this do? And now the professor says, no, no this machine uh, has, got, uh, has no purpose. And this machine has come by chance and uh, it doesn't do anything. It is, uh, it has just come by chance. It, it, it doesn't have any purpose. Uh, I mean, if that is the case, then, uh, then, uh, I mean, how do we take it in? Is it not? So if I would have been a student, then I would be saying, I mean, may not be loud, but in my heart, I would be saying that, yes, I mean, uh, uh, such an answer means that, uh, my dear sir, it seems that you know, your stay in the Department of Mechanical Engineering or Manufacturing Engineering has no purpose. Uh, and I think your uh, you know, MTech PhD degree in uh, Manufacturing Sciences has come by chance, it seems. <laughs> so that's the point. Nothing in our experience has come by chance. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So it's not a big bang, but it's a big brain. Yeah. So in fact, we will see that uh, we can do a point to point comparison between, you know, say the government of India or a national government and the universal government. The Indian government can be understood by in terms of the various departments uh, like the, you know, the home ministry, the supply ministry, the ministry of energy, the ministry of finance, defense ministry, education ministry, and so on. And each of these departments have their MPs uh, and all the, the department heads, and they offer certain services uh, to the citizens, is it not? So we can understand, uh, now if you see that, okay, uh, if the trains are on time, if the train fares are less, the frequency of the trains is increasing, uh, then we can understand, okay, the, the, the railway ministry is working very nicely, is it not? So if you see that, you know, the, uh, 
there is not so much uh, you know uh, the prices of uh, commodities are not hiking and uh, then we can understand okay the finance department is working nicely is it not so from the services we understand the functioning of the department or uh, rather our interface to the presence of the department is to the functioning is it not yeah so if there are no uh, no uh, cr the crime rate is decreasing the terrorist activities are decreasing that means the law and order the home ministry is working very nicely so uh, that's the point so now we can draw the analogy so in terms of services we can see that actually nature also provides the services by which we can understand that the exact these same departments point to point are existing in mother nature as well and therefore there is a universal government which is there behind just like indian government is providing us law and order there is something in nature which is providing us law and order yes law and order exists in nature how do we understand we understand it like this that if you break the laws you get punishment that's law and order is it not if somebody does illicit sex there is aids there is smoking there is cancer is it not drinking a person is an uh, is an alcoholic drinker he gets a little problem is it not so that's the point so whenever one does sinful activities then one one gets a punishment this means that there is law and order department you uh, know working in nature that means there is a universal government so just like you know a hospital ana may supply medicines ana uh, uh, similarly we see the medicines are supplied in nature you know in the form of ayurvedic herbs similarly just like the ministry of energy it uh, it makes different power plants you know for electricity and lighting we see that yes the nature is providing us electricity power houses the sun and the moon finance ministry gives currency wealth but we see the currency or wealth is existing in mother nature as well how in terms of gold silver navaratnas diamonds etc similarly there is defense mechanism which is existing in nature you know the ozone sphere immunity are examples of that and just like there is education ministry in government of india which provides education for students and mother nature also provides uh, enough for the education of students how in terms of the scriptures the vedas bible quran and so on so in this way if we many did we can do a point to point uh in a similar mapping and now we can make a one one you know similar mapping from seeing the services which nature is providing and we can conclude that yes just like you know our country government is providing these facilities there is a universal government behind and this universal government is made up of uh or uh, no uh, what in english is called as demigods and what in hindi is called as devas or devatas they make the universal government they are like the ministers of god who are in charge of various departments and then they offer these particular uh, facilities for us facilities for us so adding god in our lives uh, makes our lives uh, colorful and meaningful and, and and sublime actually and sublime without that without that uh, our life is dry so uh, so one is okay the okay god exists but what is the benefit of having god in our lives what is the benefit of connecting to god uh what is the benefit of connecting to god this is just like saying uh, you know okay you know i have a house you know i have put uh, uh, i have put tube lights i have put fan i have put air conditioner you know so i have all the technological gadgets with me i have laptops and all that you know what is the need uh, to connect to uh, the power supply uh, or you can say okay what is the need to connect to cesc you know yeah the electrical supply you know company is it not the calcutta electrical supply or the wb you know what's that electrical you know supply you know so what's the need to connect to you know uh, the government supply is it not so so if you don't connect where from are you going to get the electrification for all your equipments and gadgets and everything is it not so so that's a point the house may have a lot of gadgets and god is the main supply if that connection is uh, loose or that connection is cut then uh, everything else appears dark you know so that's what happens that's why we need god in our lives because uh uh because uh lives are becoming godless or people are becoming godless we are seeing that the general fabric of the society is uh, getting degraded more and more uh why the uh uh why in today's century uh you know the mental stress and the mental problems are increasing exponentially just because people are going uh, godless that's the point
That's the point. So, so yes, uh, individually, there are so many benefits. I uh, mean, individually, it's, so adding God is not just about benefits. It's, it's a case of our survival and nourishment, actually. Is it not? When we take off God from our lives, we are making ourselves into an orphan. Now, uh, now simply uh, now, uh, now battering with, uh, now being battered by the problems and the obstacles of this world all alone. We're making ourselves into an orphan, making our lives much more miserable. Uh, much more miserable. That's the whole point. It's like uh, making our lives so miserable. That's, that, that, that's the whole point. Uh, and just like I have seen many times in Mumbai locals, actually, when it's so jam-packed, crowded, and now you cannot even move your hand. I mean, uh, you, you don't know where your next bag is and all that. People are so irritated. It's hot and everybody is sweating, perspiring and so on. And I've seen in the midst of the local, actually, you know, there is a lady who's standing and, uh, and then she's holding a small child in her, in her, in her, in her hands. And this child is sleeping with us where everybody else is making irritated faces. And, uh, and, and, and there is so much of heat and there is so much of irritation in the atmosphere, the child is peacefully sleeping. Why? Because the child understands, the child is taking shelter of the mother, he understands that the mother will protect me. So he's with us, is it not? So that's the point. Uh, therefore, one of our devotees coined this very nice saying. It says, you know, okay, Krishna Das, Bindas, Maya Das, Sadav Das. So, so, so not, only, not even on an individual scale, you know, even on the collective scale, you know, social scientists have even researched about this actually. Uh, you know, uh, professors of, uh, you know, medical professors and you know, social scientists have researched about this. That, okay, uh, like uh, you know, there were these three uh, experimentalists, uh, you know, uh, Harold, Larson, Kuyong, you know, so they did around 2000, they did around 2000 experiments of uh, seeing the correlation between uh, 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 religion and health. And they found amazing, marvelous results, actually. Uh, similarly, some uh, you know, uh, medical professors, they did this kind of research. They found uh, you know, uh, of faith in, uh, in, in spirituality, uh, you know, how it affects on health. And they could figure out, yes, you know, people who are religious are twice as likely to say that I am happy. You know? They did a research on alcoholics, and then they found out that 90% of the alcoholics, serious, intense alcoholics, uh, you know, lost their faith in God. You know? So, so they, so then they published that yes, you know, the loss of faith in God is a strong correlate of one leading into self-destructive habits. Uh, researchers have found out that those who are uh, religious, uh, uh, they have better immune systems as well. So, like this, there is a whole list of experiments uh, which even uh, you know, uh, explain that on the level of society, also adding God is always uh, uh, benefits us actually. So, I will just end uh, on uh, on an, uh, no, uh, with this small uh, with this small anecdote. One time there was a race. This race was between uh, two candidates, two competitors, and a. Uh, uh, so one of the competitors was uh, uh, an enthusiast fellow, and he was riding uh, uh, Luna, Hamari Luna. And the other person was, uh, no, and again, an enthusiastic candidate, and he had a bench with him. You know? And the race was from Kharagpur to Calcutta, you know, on the NS6 highway. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think NS6. Yeah. So. So that was a race, like that. Now, now, if you were asked to actually give your vote of who is going to win and all that, uh, now what is the overwhelming vote percentage will come out? So on one side there is a Luna, and the other side there is a Benz. Now the question is, who is going to win? And we may be thinking, oh, is this a question worth asking? The answer is so evident, who is going to win? Benz, of course. If all parameters are fine, there's no accident, no machinery, you know, stops working or something like that. So there is no question. Now, now therefore, there here comes the point that can the Luna ever win? And the and the blunt, blatant answer or the cold answer is no. There is no chance. Is it not? No chance. The Luna can never win. Is it not? Now, now the whole now here comes the whole point. Now we try to map it to life. We can say yes. So so the point is, if I am a Luna in life, can I ever win? 
And the cold answer is no. And the cold answer is no. Now just imagine, now just imagine that in this race, a magical thing happens and the magical thing happens was, uh, I mean that happens is that, and our outcome, so in between comes the entry of a helicopter. And the helicopter, you know, uh, you know, and the helicopter, you know, tows uh, the Luna and the Luna driver, is it not? Or the, uh, you know, lifts up the Luna and the Luna driver. Now, who is going to? Now, who is going to win the race? Now, the game is turned, is it not? This is a, you know, so that the, 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 you know, it's a game changer now. It's a turning point which happens. Now, the Luna is going to win the race, is it not? That's the point. So that helicopter is God. And when we connect to God, then God can tow us, catapult us, or lift us from all our limitations and shortcomings and faults and fallacies and inhibitions and make us invincible. That's why. We need God at every moment in our lives. Thank you. Okay, if you have any questions, we can take uh, uh, maybe one question or so. Uh, Okay, so think about, uh, think about, you know, muse and meditate on, uh, not the discussion or uh, on the discussion today. Uh, we are trying to get into the depths of, uh, no, uh, no, uh, those and trying to get into the depths of those threads, which can, uh, no, directly create uh, a very meaningful transformation in our lives. Uh, no, uh, it's it's about, you know, that. Which can uh, you know, that which can inject or bring about you know, meaning in our moves, uh, meaning you know, that which can enrich our experience of life, that which can enrich, uh, make our moves more meaningful. Actually, uh, uh, that which can actually uh, lead to the blossoming of uh, you know, uh, the the heart, uh, and that way the blossoming of character. And, and then, then one can see that, then one can see every move, every walk is going to be uh, a quite enjoyable and so fulfilling and so auspicious for oneself and for humanity at large. So uh, in, in its real sense, one's self-interest, uh, humanity and God, everything comes in the straight line. Everything comes in the straight line. And uh, this is how uh, the Shastri directions are designed, actually. So thank you all very much. Uh, uh, we will meet again. Uh, so, so you can think about it. And then uh, you can ask uh, if you have any questions. You can reach out to me. Or you can reach out to uh, no, our mentors uh, who are there to help you uh, in all various, uh, uh, no, uh, in every, uh, no, every possible way. Uh, and then we will uh, uh, no, uh, come back again. Uh, uh, for an interesting and enlivening churning and discussion for you uh, next Sunday. Thank you.
so we thank all the participants so thank you so much for being with us and uh, we also thank uh, mayank sir for being with us taking out this precious time so we'll meet you in the next session and uh, so uh, you know the lead services channel you can always subscribe to so l e a d s e r v i c e s you can uh, type it on youtube and get the uh, channel so you can subscribe that thank you so much for being with us all right so i'll meet you in the next session goodbye